Hi, I'm Mike Stanton. This is the BAM Weekly Muni Market Update for February 28th. I'm here with Dan Bingham from BAM's Capital Markets Desk. We have a lot to cover today. We actually have a special interview between BAM's Greg Pacifico and Ben Watkins, head of bond finance from the state of Florida, who spoke at the Bond Buyer Texas Public Finance Conference earlier this week. But Dan, let's get started. Uh, there was a lot to talk about in the interest rate markets as well as the coronavirus really seized investors' attention this week. Sure. It was uh, quite, a, quite a week as, uh, in uh, terms of volatility that we saw in both the Treasury market and the equity markets as the World uh, Health Organization increased the risk level to very high from high <laughs> and continues concerns around the globe in, in the uh, fallout in regards to that virus. Um, the 10-year tre uh, Treasury uh, continued to rally, setting record lows at a 114 currently. Um, in the 30-year Treasury, uh, also setting record lows at a 165. You know, tremendous uh, volatility, tremendous amount of uh, activity in the uh, Treasury markets in reaction to that. And on the Muni side, uh, MMD, the 10-year was below 1%, right? Yep, the 10-year broke below 1% for the first time ever, currently at a uh, 0.93. Um, in the 30-year uh, MMD, uh, settling in today at a 152. Importantly, we didn't see uh, any uh, change on 30-year MMD, even given the two and a half point rally we saw in the Treasury market. And uh, the Bond Buyer 20 index, which is probably the longest running index in the muni market, I know, is down to its uh, lows since 1955. So it just uh, or the 1950s anyway. So it gives you a long sense of how how unprecedented this is. Last time we were there was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so let's talk really quickly about the the new issue market. It was a heavy new issue new issue week dominated by the, the Buckeye tobacco securitization. But on the BAM side, I saw about $278 million of uh, transactions priced. What, what stood out? So the, um, you know, this week, Buckeye obviously took a lot of the attention and uh, a deal that was just shy of $5 billion right. um, was very well received, a total of uh, close to $50 billion in orders. Um, and on the break, when the deal freed up to trade in the secondary market, uh, we saw prices improve by 40, 50, 60 basis points. And as the week went on, we saw a continued improvement in pricing um, and yields on that deal. So very well received in the marketplace. And then on the BAM insured side, we have a couple of $50 million deals. Springdale, Arkansas was a sales and use tax transaction priced by Cruz and Associates, a uh, $50 million transaction for the Reading Area Water Authority by Stiefel. We talked about that last week. Uh, Gia Calabrese from BAM's East Coast uh, Public Finance staff did a Credit Insights video on that transaction. And I saw $42 million for the University of Idaho. Uh, that was a Wells Fargo transaction. Uh, looking at the next week, a little over $230 million of BAM paper already on the calendar. Um, the Northern Illinois University transaction, Wells Fargo going to price. They, they yeah. pushed that back, right? Yeah, that deal was expected to price this week and was pushed to next week. And in hindsight or foresight, uh, you know, looks like a pretty good opportunity to get some great pricing on that deal. We're good, but uh, about a little over eight million, uh, eight billion dollars of muni bonds uh, scheduled to price next yeah, week. So still eight billion is uh, much lighter than last week, but uh, it's still <laughs> a meaningful size calendar. Very good. Well, thanks for being with us today, Dan. Thanks yep, for watching. Thank you, and please stay tuned for that interview between Greg Pacifico and Ben Watkins. Hi, I'm Greg Pacifico with uh, Build America Mutual. I'm here with Ben Watkins, uh, the director for the State of Florida Division of Bond Finance. We were just on a ESG panel together at the uh, Texas Bond Buyer Conference, and we just wanted to cover a couple topics here. Um, so Ben, how do you see um, investors' interest changing in the ESG space, and how has that changed things for you right. uh, internally? Right. So ESG is uh, a broad umbrella that's uh, um, that investors and analysts are, are very uh, interested in knowing about as part of their investment mandate and interested in the information around that space. Mm -hmm. uh, it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. For us in Florida, it, mean, it's, it means talking about the risks associated with catastrophic events, hurricanes, and sea level rise as mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. and what we're doing about that. And so, um, uh, my job is to assimilate the information and convey that to the investor and analyst community okay. in a meaningful way mm. so that they have the information they're looking for to answer the questions that they need to answer before making an investment decision. Mm -hmm. So do you see ESG factors becoming more of an opportunity than they are? A, uh, a risk at this point? Yes, yeah, so the risks exist and so ESG can only be an opportunity for us in terms of demonstrating how thoughtful and proactive we're being to uh, to address those risks to mitigate the potential uh, impact, uh, financial 
as, as well as uh, human suffering uh, mm -hmm. associated with catastrophic events. Mm -hmm. So, so yes, it's I, I totally view it as an opportunity and not as uh, uh, no downside, all upside for mm -hmm. us. Okay, great. Well, thanks very much, Ben, and thank you.